is Jenna. I'm the park naturalist here at Bear Branch Nature Center and Hashua Environmental Center. And we are here in front of our aviary today to give you a little spiel about some of our awesome birds that we have here. Now we have all of these birds under multiple different permits through DNR and US Fish and Wildlife and the USDA. Uh, and they are all living with us because they cannot be returned back into the wild for multiple reasons. Uh, some of them have injuries from either flying into glass, getting hit by cars. Others are imprints, meaning that they were raised by people. And so all these guys cannot be returned back into the wild. And instead we use them to be our amazing animal ambassadors for their species, teach people up close about how cool these birds are and what people at home can do to make sure that we don't get any more birds into our aviary here. This is our, our female red tail hawk. Our male is, of course, smaller, um, and they are currently in their nesting season. So we give them a whole bunch of sticks, pine sticks, all sorts of stuff, and they go ahead and they build their nest each year. These guys will then mate and they lay eggs. Our permitting does not allow us to let them hatch their eggs. A uh, couple of reasons. One, we just don't have the permit. Two, these are captive birds. They cannot raise wild babies. Three, red-tailed hawks are a dime a dozen. Um, definitely, if you've seen a large hawk somewhere around, most likely it was probably a red-tailed hawk. Uh, it would be a whole protocol to have someone puppet hand feed, raise them to be able to release them out in the wild. Um, and these guys are doing, doing just fine out in the wild enough. So that's why we don't let them hatch them. And instead, uh, we grab the eggs out and we put in fake wooden chicken eggs. Uh, so our, our pair is still able to do everything that they would do out in the wild, um, just they won't hatch. So come beginning of June is usually when they're like, oh, guess they're not hatching this year. Oh well, and then they just are, they'll stop sitting on the nest. We go in, we clean everything out, uh, and then we repeat the whole process again in February. Now she is an imprint, so that means someone had her uh, as a pet, or they thought that they were going to use her for the sport of falconry. Falconry is the art of hunting with a trained, to a degree trained, uh, bird of prey in order to go and catch uh, wild quarry, wild food sources. She would have been excellent at that, especially considering she is a very large girl uh, and bigger raptors can take down larger prey for their falconry partner. With her being an imprint, people, uh, she associates people with food. Um, and so while she has definitely showed that she can hunt because occasionally a squirrel does get into the enclosure and she has 100% taken the opportunity to then eat said squirrel, but she still associates that people are awesome, people are food, and it would be extremely dangerous to just have her out randomly landing on someone's head because she's like, hey, you got something for me? These guys, it's not necessarily, it's their vision is sharper, but it's also they're taking in so much more information faster than we can. Um, so they're constantly looking and just taking in all this information about what their surroundings are. Uh, and so that's what gives them such, such good vision. So you can see how she's just kind of surveying everything. Uh, eyes like a hawk. That's because they're constantly looking around. They have great vision. So crows are also amazing birds. They're very, very smart. Mm -hmm. um, but crows and hawks definitely have like this tiff going on. Um, and that's because a hawk will very easily try to raid a crow nest um, to eat the babies, things like that. Uh, crows kind of same way. They like to raid nests and stuff too. And so a group of crows, a murder, will get together and they will dive bomb hawks uh, to just be like, hey, I can see you. That means you can't sneak up on me. Uh, and oftentimes if you have a lot of crows in an area, there will be less hawks in general because they don't want to deal with it. So if you have backyard chickens, it's actually great to have like a flock of crows around or even to have darker colored chickens that look like crows to help keep the hawks away from your flock. These guys, if you have um, even a smaller kind of patch of woods. Um, they love edge habitats. So actually, this is a very thin edge that goes out through our field here. But if you have a large kind of patch of wooded area and then a big open field, they love to nest up in those areas. They are not a cavity nester. So it's not like you can just put up a box and expect a red tail to move in like you can with a kestrel. Um, but these guys are so good at camouflaging their nest and also themselves. You would be amazed that especially once the leaves come onto the trees, 
you can have a hawk sitting up in a tree and you might not even notice it. They're excellent at camouflaging. Our guys take advantage of the, the nesting platform that we have. It's just a flat area, uh, a little bit easier for them to build their nest. Other ones, they're taking large branches and weaving it in between other branches to be able to support their, their nests that they build.